Folks, welcome back. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the 2024 economic and investment outlook. We are soon officially going to be entering an interest rate cutting cycle. Right now, the market is strongly expecting the Fed to begin cutting rates as soon as this coming March by 25 basis points. This expectation is coming at a time when inflation is having a harder time coming down as shown in the latest report. We can see that inflation is making a double bottom here, which is primarily due to high housing costs, keeping overall inflation stay around the 3% level, which is higher than the Fed's current mandate of 2%. Now throughout 2024, I'm going to have a lot of macro analysis, fundamental research, and wealth building strategies to help you. So make sure to subscribe, turn on the bell, join me on Substack, Twitter, Instagram, and Seeking Alpha, and let's get started. Your comments are really important. So as we enter one of the most pivotal years ever, please share your thoughts below. Also, I'm going to share the slide decks of my videos. So just drop your email below and you'll automatically get this video's slides. Now I was recently invited as a guest speaker on Money Show's virtual expo, and I look forward to sharing more research with my followers here that I do with the professional community. We'll talk about three things, the current job market landscape in US and China, the upcoming economic catalyst, and what I'm thinking about them. In previous videos, I talked about how last year was a window of opportunity for us to make as much money as possible to prepare for leaner years, which could be coming up ahead. This year, I think the picture is much more muddy and unclear. We're already seeing this play out in terms of the white collar job market outlook. Did you know that 10 out of the last 11 job reports, headline figures which have been released have gotten revised lower the following month? 10 out of the last 11 months. For example, last year, October was revised down 45,000 jobs from 150,000 initially reported to 105,000. And then November was revised down 26,000 from 199,000 jobs created down to 173,000 jobs. So every time there is a news update about how strong the job market is, the following month it gets revised. And because this follow-up update isn't widely disseminated in media, very few people actually know about the updated figures. But what is very clear is that in the US and in China, there is what I would describe to be a great divide among people. There is a growing class of people who have benefited from the great rise in assets over the past year. The Fed's 18 month long campaign of rising interest rates started coming to an end last year, and that sparked a major flood of capital off the sidelines back into the US market. Now we can see from Wall Street firm Bank of America fund manager surveys that cash is being lifted off the sidelines and being deployed back into the market. People who are fortunate enough to keep their jobs last year or be in a position or industry that saw a positive outlook were able to participate in rising markets. Home values continue to stay tightly higher because of low inventory. Now, if that is you, you're in a really good position because that is not the situation for a lot of people. In fact, we are seeing the divide in the wealth gap become to widen significantly. And the middle class in the US is greatly shrinking at an alarming rate. The amount of assets owned by the middle class is shrinking every single year by a faster and faster clip. Right now, the typical household needs an additional $11,400 to afford the same exact lifestyle that they had in January 2021. $11,400. Not everyone is making $11,400 more than they did in 2021. Some people are, but with the white collar recession that has been going on, it's highly unlikely that the majority of people are better off than they were three years ago. What's more likely is that the inflation situation has made the stakes higher for a lot of people, especially for people who are underemployed or unemployed. This Bloomberg article does a great job at describing the predicament. The stakes have been raised for those who have lost work because everything around them is more expensive. Housing, food, health insurance, auto loans, with the savings rates now near a decade's low at around 4%, there's really no buffer for the typical person who is unemployed or underemployed. Now, if you're working hard to save money and invest, I want to mention our video partner here today, Mumu. Now, if you want your money to keep working for you, generate passive income, even during non-working hours, I can't wait to share with you the brokerage that I've recently been using, Mumu. It offers a 5.1% APY plus extra 3% APY for your uninvested cash, which means that if you deposit 20,000 in the Mumu brokerage, you can receive about $405 in three months without doing anything. This is one of the highest interest rates that I've ever seen. It's 18 times higher than the national average for savings accounts of 0.45%. It also supports on-demand withdrawals, making it more flexible than traditional banks. 
That's an incredible way to make passive income on your cash. And if you're worried about fund safety, don't worry. Your funds are in a cash suite program that is protected by $1 million of FDIC insurance offering the same security as traditional banks. I really like the institutional tracking feature that allows you to easily track what stocks Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway has recently bought. These useful and powerful features are not subscription-based like other platforms. For example, Moomoo provides company valuations with PE ratios and price to boot ratios, which allows you to easily compare stocks and know which company is cheaper and more worthwhile. Other platforms charge subscription fees, but Moomoo does not. At the same time, what impresses me about the platform is that it's not only zero commission trading, there's also no platform fees for stocks, options, and ETFs. So when I compare it with other brokerages, I found that its fees are the lowest. An excellent choice for investors who want to save money while also investing. That's not all. With my exclusive link below, new users grab up to 15 free stocks. So park your idle funds in Moomoo for a sweet 5.1% APY plus 3% APY extra or earn up to $5,000 in cash rewards when you transfer a certain amount of assets to Moomoo. Okay, back to the video. If we think about the job market data, let's take a look at the big picture. Here's what we see. The number of job openings continues to fall. Private ADP data shows that private companies are not hiring as many people as before. The unemployment rate is still low, but most of the jobs are concentrated in part-time work sectors. Now, many of the industries that are high paying like tech and finance, they are cutting back. In fact, this year we've seen both growth and mature companies like Unity Software and Xerox cut a significant percent of their headcount. Big tech layoffs are also resuming as we've seen from Amazon, Twitch, Google, and others. Now this article here talks about how hard it is right now to land a new job in software development, which was once the hottest sector for new grads to get jobs in. So while the unemployment rate is low right now, it's low because a lot of people are working multiple jobs. Now the situation in China is also similarly challenging. While I was in China last year, I spoke with family friends who gave me an assessment of the overall labor market landscape. And the current job market for youth at the moment is challenging. This is because private industries are severely cutting back and government jobs are also hard to find. For now, baby boomers and the older generation in China have a lot of wealth built up because of their real estate property values, which have soared in the past decades. The problem now is whether the current generation of millennials and Gen Z can continue to extend their parents' former success in today's environment. Now, some government employees from smaller provinces have reported that their salaries are not completely paid out in full, so cash flow for a lot of government workers is becoming a personal finance issue as well. China has a population with a large savings rate, but the focus at the moment is that they are tightening their belts because of the uncertainty over the next one to two years. We can see that China's consumer confidence is at multi-decade lows, and this will take some time for the consumer mindset to digest the extreme degree of uncertainty in their job market outlook. There are a lot of videos highlighting that many Chinese small businesses are going out of business. There's no doubt that the environment is difficult right now, but from official data, we still have the largest companies in China maintaining positive single sales growth. Companies like Alibaba, companies like JD, they've reported annual sales growth in the single digit profile. The landscape for both the US and China though is difficult, and this is because the world is becoming a more protectionist place. So this leads me now to talk about catalysts. Now in a normal operating business environment, catalysts for the economy and the markets are generally going to come from company specific innovation like ChatGPT, AI last year, or big fiscal monetary pushes from the government to either stimulate the economy or deflate it by raising rates or lowering them. Monetary and fiscal items that we can look for are the coming Fed pivot, We'll talk about this more in future videos, so make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell. The Fed is going to lower rates this year, not because inflation is necessarily falling, but because businesses that were built on low interest rates in the past couple of years can't survive in this high rate environment. The last two years have been a painful reset for smaller enterprises. Just look at the Russell 2000. That ETF is a good proxy for that. But this year is not so normal in that geopolitics is playing a bigger theme. This year is the US election, and it's also a year where it appears the EU and China relations are set to become more challenged than ever before. A brewing trade war is formulating between the EU and China. And all at the same time, we're seeing many emerging market countries and their currencies see massive deflation, such as Argentina, because inflation in Argentina is soaring 28% last month to the highest level since 1990. 
Now, what is the EU and China trade war that's brewing? Well, back on September 13th, 2023, the EU Commission president launched an anti-subsidy investigation into China EV exports. This has tried to contain the effects of growing EV exports from China, which are gaining more market share in Europe away from domestic automakers. Now, the EU will most likely have to raise tariffs that make EV cars from China more expensive to sell in Europe, therefore less competitive to lower their ability to gain market share. But most likely, China will respond with tit-for-tat geopolitical strategies to make it harder for certain European companies to do business in China. We can already see this in the recent liquor probes that are escalating tensions with the EU. Now, the direct impact on this is that conglomerates like Louis Vuitton, LVMH, where liquors is a rather important part of their business, will see great uncertainty and valuation cuts because China is a big part of their market for liquors. Now, all these trade wars combined simply makes it harder to do business on top of a soft business environment already. And with the U.S. presidential election heating up, it's rather difficult to imagine that rhetoric on China will become friendlier in the coming months. Regardless of who wins in the White House, the writing is on the wall that the U.S. may keep tensions high with China for now. And that means you can expect U.S. companies that have heavy operations in China to possibly have subdued outlooks for that part of their business in the quarters to come. So here's how I'm planning for this from both a personal finance perspective as well as an investment standpoint. My belief is that in the foreseeable future, the very near term, the U.S. markets continue to make modest higher highs. It's my observation that corporate America has whittled down their workforce so much to keep their profit margin stable to report in the coming quarters. But in the background, the typical consumer is now unable to even fully pay off their credit card bills. And in the meantime, history does show that when the Fed rate cuts begin, this may not necessarily always be positive for stocks, if it's confirmation that a recession is here. This brings me to the prediction section of this video. What's the bull case if there is continued stability for the S&P 500? I think it's about 49.50 to 5,000, so about 2 to 3% from here. Where is the S&P going to touch this year if things get rough? 4,000 or under, at least. I'll be a long-term buyer then, but not here at 4,800. And anything in between, I'll let my Substack friends know what I'm thinking. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe here and on my social media channels. Thank you for your support and to Moomoo for sponsoring today's video. And I will see you next time.